you with your fucking, I mean, your shoes in your hand. You better, you better have some badges for Brock. Brock, he's always oh, looking for Christ. badges. Well, it's funny because, I mean, Brock, I mean, obviously, you know, Brock and stuff like that. I don't know if I get lost. I always remember with Brock is when, it was certainly we were playing Hibs first game of the season. We won 2-0 and uh, it was an early, early kickoff on the Sunday morning. We were in there and there was guys that had been in the bar all night nipping at everybody's head when they were trying to watch a game. And Brock was going fucking mental about it. Like, he was wanting the whole Bronx shot doing and this, this fucking disgrace, blah, 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 blah. And about eight, nine hours after the game, I went past with my young son. It was a beautiful hot day. And there was mayhem taking place in the bar. And I thought, for fuck's sake, these cunts are now cracked off a riot. And I said to the barman, is that the fucking idiot? He's up on ice. He's on, oh, on, no. I said, it was Brock. He said, he jumped in the fucking ice bucket naked. <laughs> 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 so that lets him eat hours on to the fucking complaining. But now I look forward to seeing all the boys in that again. It's been a while. And uh, can't he wait? Can't he wait at oh, all? Absolutely. I'm jealous as fuck. I'd love to be well with you. Ah, I'm superb. See, see the thing as well, Paul. See the more of these you do, obviously the more polished you get. And see the, quest, the questions that's getting asked. They'll start, they must start repeating themselves because loads of people can ask the same kind of question. So your answers to them are getting more polished as well, you know, and it, I think you, you must be sort of in your comfort zone now because you... Aye, I mean, as a, honestly, a guy, a stand-up comedian, who says you can do stand-up comedy for 30 years, take three months off and then when you stay again, it's like you've never done it before. And I can totally relate to that. It was really good to actually have a night like Saturday because it was getting back in the swing, you know, and I'm really glad that it happened because obviously the last one was Carl Luke and although it was only a month ago, it feel, you know, feels like a lot longer because it was Christmas and New Year and stuff and that already yeah. feels like a long time ago. So I, you do certainly have a, have a, a kind of gauge of what people are going to say and often, you know, the question will be seen but they'll be kind of reacting to what might actually be happening, you know, because obviously the kind of safe close circus it goes on, people are anxious to hear what you think about this, that, and next thing. And, um, aye, and it's, it's, it's important to know, I think it's always important to to, to ensure that you didn't act as, oh, God, no, this question again, because that's the first time somebody's ever met you or spoke yeah. to you or even knew who you were. So you have to try and give them the same level of commitment and answer and, and, and passion and honesty that you would anybody. And so, but it's just great talking to people because, as I said before, that what inevitably then happens is you talk to people after it and you end up all talking about Celtic and Bevian and whatever, which is, you know, what I like then, basically. So, yeah, I really, really can't wait. And, and, and being able to meet loads of people on Twitter and Philly and all that that I've, you know, talked to for years and never never met, you know, it'll be good as well. And hopefully we'll get the message out and spread the word even further, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, well done. And then you got Vegas in the summer, so fine. Yes, I... Australia. Australia, Australia as well, I fucking Australia. Can't lose. Aye, that's that's gone really well. Boys in Australia have done a fantastic job organising that. All my internal flights are booked for that now and all the gigs are set up and, uh, and it's gone really well. You've actually, you've actually it's... had lads from Australia mention to me sort of the messages and stuff that they're looking forward to seeing it. Uh, Andy Carr was on to me saying like he's looking forward to seeing it, you know, so they're very they're excited in Australia, you know. Yeah, and um, you know they've needed to set up a web, uh, website asterisk down under dot com looks fantastic. Shows you all the venues when it is, you know what kind of gig it's going to be and stuff. Um, so that's going to be fantastic. And um, there's more and more shows being added in Scotland. There's just one being added. There's a couple going to be added tomorrow that I'll announce. Um, February fifteenth, there's going to be a big big announcement regarding a show in May. Uh, and then there could the, the, the obviously Vegas and stuff like that, and there might be a couple of others. So, um, you know, at the start, quite a lot of people were saying to me, oh, you know, you're not getting this word do it enough. Well, we're trying our best now, you know what I mean? I've been bankrolling the whole thing myself in terms of all the travel and stuff like that, uh, you know, to Australia and America and stuff. So, trying to do as best I can and then just looking for the same response for everybody else, you know? Um, we, we forgot about Aloha, so we did. I Aloha, I think that's, I mean, that's the thing, I mean, Aloha, I believe, is almost sold out, the Mallard and Kilmer Hill's basically sold out, Cope Bridge is sold out tonight, I think there'll be another night in Cope Bridge um, because of that, um, Airdrie is, is basically sold out already, so it's it's good that, you know, I've said before that one of the things we wanted to, wanted to do was not only just put the film out there and try and get the message out, but to try and give the clubs and people a turn so that they could have a night and, and make a few bob for themselves or for whatever charity they pick and um, fortunately that's that's what so far like. Do you know how I, I can tell you now I can tell you now Alawa will be 
bonkers. <laughs> that, that uh, epic is, that, is that all right? That's just generally bonkers anyway, no? Uh, but it's mad in a good way. Like, I mean, you'll, you'll have a great time, Ral. I'll tell you that right now, but they're all, they're all fucking storm mad. Like. <laughs> And I be getting on the Celtic Supporters Association as well. I go on this uh, group, the uh, the Den Social Club on the on the Facebook, and uh, we're getting Paul in there for that. So that'll be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a night of full the cable dance. Oh, somebody you mentioned that Paul about like, you know the, the the nights being good and stuff, and, and, and them being nights for the clubs. Who was the talking to on Saturday night? It might have been Jim. What do you remember, Jim Barber? Jim. Hi. No. Uh, that narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody for Drada like or what? I no, a Scottish fella. He lives in Drada. Scottish fella, dark hair. We're chatting to him. I forgot a second name. We're talking to Jim, and Jim was saying like he he was saying you know there's been a, the, there's a lack of Celtic nights. You know when he hasn't been to enough Celtic nights. And he said right. he said things like this. He said they're like, brilliant. He said the fact that this film exists, it's the fact that this is going on, and the podcast exists, and all these things are part of the sort of Celtic culture in a sort of weird, wonderful sort of online kind of way. He said it's great. He said because then they, then they come together, and there's nights like that where you watch the film, you talk Celtic, you you fucking sing some songs, and you get, you get a drink, and you all get together, which is again something we've always said in the show. Getting together is just something we we love doing. And, so uh, that, that's a great point actually, because there was a number of people who said to me. It was Saturday night that they didn't even realise there was a supporters club in Drogheda. Ah. And uh, we'll probably get a knock-on effect for Saturday night. Even this Sunday, probably guys will come back uh, to, to come and watch the game on Sunday and, and obviously help our club. And if guys want to join in that, no, we'll definitely get a knock-on effect. No, you're right what you're saying because there isn't enough Celtic nights in this area, I don't think. And it proves there is a big Celtic fan base around about the area. And as I say, if, if, that, if so Marcus didn't have that other party going on the same night. It would have been it would have been a lot more busy. And, uh, hopefully, it's something we can build on in this area and, and get more nights like this. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, can't keep showing films and that, but just have different Celtic things as a couple of times a season, like no, and get everybody together. And, well, you're hundred percent right, eh? See, see what I would say for an outsider looking in. I always, I always think, see Celtic fans in Ireland, they're they're diehards. You know, right. see, see if Celtic's your first team in Ireland. You're a fanatic, right. you know, because it's hard for Celtic to be your first team in Ireland because of the, the English football that's been chucked down your throat for years and years and years. And it's dead easy, they've got all the money, and it's like, because you're, you're an equidistant away from Liverpool as you're from Glasgow. You know, it's easy yep. enough to get to Manchester to get. So you can go and watch Champions League football in Old Trafford, uh, and you've got a good chance of beating. Real Madrid, Barcelona's, or whatever, or you can come to Celtic Park, and it's it's for to be a Celtic fan, you you need to have the bit in you, and I think the Irish fans that do follow Celtic are diehards. You right. know, they 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 give it give it their all. So if you you put out to them, because I've joined quite a few groups on Twitter and Facebook and things like that, and there's quite a lot of the Irish fans, a lot of them are Everton fans and things like that, and a lot of them are Celtic fans. But the, the, the ones that are Celtic fans, you can tell they're absolute, you know, and they, they kind of hate English football. You know, right. they, they, they've got this bit about them that it's like, they're oh, fuck you, and they become very <laughs> kind of defensive about Celtic, and it's great to see. And I think Celtic fans, if you, if you ran like a Man United night, you could fill a place, right? But the vast majority, what did you like have a shit, really? You know? Like, if Liverpool fans walked into that night, they wouldn't really care, you know, they'd all sit and have a laugh with each other. And like, it's kind of just like a pastime. But if you're a Celtic fan, it's kind of your life. Right. Is that right? Would yeah, you agree? And, 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 I completely. And I think also as well, even we extra to that, I think you find a lot of the Celtic fans are League Island fans as well. Aye. Because they, they, they see that as a sort of kind of their Irish culture is their, their Irish team but Celtic is part of that as well do you know what I mean they're not the guys that support English teams aye uh, but no you're, you're 100% right because it's difficult to support Celtic in Ireland exactly, for a lot exactly. Of people. it's difficult to find groups of people to go and watch games with it's, just, it's difficult to find pubs sometimes yeah. when you game on so I mean I, I experienced it when I came, as I say as I was naive I thought every pub was a Celtic pub and everybody would walk about with Battle Clavers on do you know what I mean but uh, I, I, I found it very difficult to find somebody to watch the game until I found Sarsfields. And I think a lot of people will find that the same. But they're, they're the guys uh, that were there for Dublin, for my work and that, that were there on Saturday night. They're probably going to come through and watch the game with us on Sunday. 
because they really, really only got the choice here. So uh, the 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 Neve the Neve Podrick Supporters Club, and they just enjoyed themselves on, on Saturday night. So they're going to come through us. It's not you walk you well because it's Celtic and Sevco, right? All, obviously, all the pubs will be showing it, right? That's that's probably a bad example. But normal games, the Celtic were on at the same time as the EPL. Forget it. Ninety-five percent of the pubs are showing Liverpool or Man United. Or, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. In fact, on on the big screen, and you maybe have Celtic on a wee fucking portable in the corner. That's, that's the like what's that. the worst fucking thing? You're sitting to watch uh, tiny TV in the corner with no sound. You're like, uh, you're, you're facing the other direction from uh, where else in the pub. <laughs> and you, you said that's horrible. You know what I mean, uh, but that's how a lot of people end up just sitting at home. So I that see. was that was the idea about starting up a sports club draw because they are the, the fans are out there. Somebody's trying to sit in the home and stuff like get everybody out. I think I said on Facebook somebody's trying to start a Balbriggan supporters club, but obviously I can't betray my draw to roots at this stage. Yeah, uh, be surprised. But all the Balbriggan boys go to St. Barbara, so I mean, so yeah, I know I've seen it on Facebook, I mean, uh, yeah. So that's I don't know, we'll see what happens there. I know uh, they show all the games in the Milestone and Balbriggan. I uh, sure I stopped, I stopped going to those pubs years ago, man. Right? When I, when I started staying at home. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, we'll have a wee chat about the, the game on Sunday, and then we'll uh, few predictions. We'll do uh, we'll do good or bad uh, predictions. It's a tough one, but uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go safe with a four nil. Aye. So, Harbour. Uh, I'm gonna go three nil. Just because they've just got to defend, 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 kick, kick, kick. Uh, but as I said earlier, I, I, I'm going to have Tony Stokes man in the match. He'll definitely score. Uh, Lee Griffiths will definitely score if he's playing. Uh, I can just imagine Lee Griffiths going absolutely punt. I was thinking exactly the same thing. I think he was made for him. <laughs> oh, oh right. fucking so, brilliant. Uh, I just, do you know what? I'm I'm looking forward to it. No, it's not all got this it doesn't have the same sort of build up feeling to games and, and times gone by playing against the old club because I just think we're so far in front of them and I don't really have the kind of nerves that you used to get. Um even although the day comes to the game they'll stop that bit as Jason says, fuck's sake it's the cup, blah blah blah. But I'm looking forward to just the day that's in it and obviously in the pub and we're gonna have a bit of music after it and that. So I'm I'm looking forward. I took Monday off. The Super Bowls on Sunday night as well, but the chances to be fucking seeing that. <laughs> You'd be seeing the fucking toilet bowl before you uh, see the Super Bowl. But, uh, <laughs> I've, took my, I've took Monday off work anyway, which is always good, so a bit, a bit of crack. Eh? Paul, Paul, I've just had a text here. Is it Thursday or Wednesday you go to America? Thursday. Because a couple of guys, they're thinking about, can you take some Cano Foundation stuff out of hand out? Do you get any room in your cases? What is it like? I've no idea. Just t-shirts and stuff like that, just to get you to folk in Philadelphia. I think it's a, how, how would they get it to me? I know. I'll find that if they can get it to you then. So actually, I have to leave on Wednesday because I'm leaving for Manchester. So. Ah, right, so it's Wednesday. So they need to get it to the end of the Wednesday. They don't have it. I'll just, put it back to them. You see Paul Argan getting on, the, getting on the plane and right. Right. Nine, just 19 Kano t-shirts on them. I'm not comfortable taking anything that anybody wants to pass the, me. The, they've, 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 get, they've, they've got Kano foundation things and a donkey. The donkey will be fine. <laughs> 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 it's, it's green, green and white, mate. I'll be all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right, so, uh, Paul, your prediction? Yeah, I think we'll win 3 0, and I think the final will be a much harder game. Jason? I'm going, I'm going 4 0. You, Joe, I said minimum 4. But I think the thing is, uh, my mate posted, uh, he's got a bet on it. I know you probably need to put a few quid on this, but it's even money for both teams not to score. Which, because I don't think they'll score. So that's even money. So, that's you're, so you're going four 0 but you're 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 offered. You're saying well, the the, the nil part is paramount. I think they'll get. I think they'll score nil. Well, okay. I can't see them scoring against us. So two teams don't score, you win. So obviously, God forbid, we don't score. But oh, I can't see that. No, me either. There's another semi final. Aberdeen, Aberdeen Dundee United. Mm-hmm. Dundee United, Dundee United, I couldn't remember Dundee United. Does it, the go new to, does it go to replay or does it go to extra time? No, it, can we just call them the firm though? Because they used to be oh. the new firm, we were the old firm, so we, we are not existing anymore as an old firm entity. They are now just the firm. 
doesn't, have, does, doesn't have the same ring, does it, though? The firm. That doesn't it, but it's a fact. Well, that's true, yeah. Uh, yeah, a boy from my work, come back from Aberdeen there, he was working there for two weeks. He said, I'm on the bar up there at the minute. Price of life.